What's up amigos, Commander Jaime here today. Today we're going to learn how to play Grand Blue. I'm going to cover the two main decks, Night Rose and Beatrice. I'll cover some of the winning images, the common cards, the strides, and also some tips to help out with the clan in general. So let's get right into it. Next level gaming has the new playmats already out for we have Bruce versus Bastion over here. Really amazing artwork, so I highly recommend. We also have the Vanguard Valentine's one, so if you're into like Angel Feather, for example, this would be perfect as well. And in the future coming out, we'll have something with Zorga versus Seraf Snow. So I'm excited for that one too. I'm gonna actually get that one myself too. So you can check out the affiliated link down in the description below and also get a 10% discount on your next purchase. Grand Blue as a whole focus on reviving cards from the drop zone onto the rearguard circle. So that way you can have a multi-attack strategy behind it as well. And so this is a more rearguard centric clan as well so for night rose specifically once you ride to grade three turn you usually pick protect one for night rose and then with her skills her first skill is that she's able to give plus 5k for each rear guard and at the end of the battle that they attack they are retired immediately and then their second and her second skill is that when she attacks you can kind of blast one choose a column and revive two units in it and then if your opponent's grade three or greater uh your vanguard gets an additional 10k and so really what this does enables multi-attack but also the cards that are attacking first get retired immediately so this lets you to be able to reuse the same unit as well so that way you have a consistent aggressive turn common cards that you want to focus on are skull dragon and negrobone negrobone activates from the drop zone so you can actually discard one card bottom deck this card as well and then you can superior call a card onto regard circle and if you have 10 cards or more you can revive anything otherwise you would have to revive just a grade one so with that in tandem with skull dragon skull dragon is that it gets plus 2k for every card in the drop zone so this easily gets as a big beater for you and as you can see once you hit 10 cards or more it starts to accumulate at a bigger size of so 32k plus Skull Dragon also has the restriction that it cannot be called from hand, so you have to superior call it from drop zone with some kind of effect. So Negrobone helps with that during the main phase, so you could have a setup to do the five attack turn in a sense. You may be asking like, how do you get to five attacks? And that's why you have cards such as Columbard and Beatrice, where Columbard uses a counter blast to revive a unit, and Beatrice also uses a soul blast to revive a unit. And so with Columbard, you're able to fetch anything that you need to on top of that, but just be mindful of the resources that you need to. And so how the strategy plays out for this four Skull Dragon attack turn is that you attack with both your Skull Dragons first, they retire themselves, now you got Nairos attacking with a booster to make a decent number. Kind of blast one, choose a column, revive one of the Skull Dragons with one of those cards, Columbard or Beatrice behind it. And then you can use Columbard or Beatrice's skill to revive the second Skull Dragon onto the other front row. So that way you have four Skull Dragon attacks, which are really huge as the game progresses. Now going into a more Beatrice Vanguard focus deck in V Premium. So the difference is that her skill also works on Vanguard Circle, so you can revive a unit immediately. This deck also has the ability to either choose Protect 1 or Protect 2, just depending on the matchup. So that way your rear guards also get power, but also have a defensive nature. Beatrice has actually defensive capabilities that are actually worth looking into. Beatrice has two other Vanguard Circle skills. So the second one is that all your units with Ghosty in the name, on rearguard circle or guardian circle they get intercept and also plus 5k attack and plus 5k shield so this helps with the defensive nature as well but also power up to your units that are ghosties the third skill is that when your rear guard is retired through your card's ability during your turn you can counter blast one and call a card with ghosty in the card name that is a great less than the unit that was actually retired and from your drop zone onto your regard circle so as an example here we can see we have a skull dragon that can attack it'll retire itself due to its own skill which would activate beatrice's skill use beatrice to kind of blast to revive another ghosty a good example will be jesse the ghosty jesse the ghosty then has a skill when it attacks that you can actually have it get plus 5k and then at the end of the battle, retire it. And if you haven't counter charged yet, you can counter charge with this unit. But this lets you keep going. In essence, as you can see, the counter blast that you just used, you refund it. So the next ghosty that you will go to will be Damien. Damien also as well at the end of the battle attacks. With you having a Vanguard with ghosty in the name, you can actually retire this unit. And again, if you did not counter charge with this ability of this card, you can counter charge this one. And then finally, you can go onto a grade zero, which can be any unit that are grade zero ghosties, or more commonly, your heal trigger that you have. It's the 20k shield, Rick the Ghosty, for example. And yes, you can use a booster, or you can even attack with your Vanguard to put drive tracks on it too. That way, it can actually have an impact. But really, the main setup at the end of this is that you do have a heal trigger that's on the field. And because of Beatrice given intercept as well, you can use Rick the Ghosty to also guard with it during your opponent's turn. So that way the 20k shield becomes 25k shield and essentially free. 
So that way you can conserve hand in that point. You can also use the other column on the other side for Beatrice to be able to combo off, but just be cognizant of your counter blast. Other key common cards, again, with Column Bard. Column Bard is used in pretty much almost every Grand Blue deck, really because it's, you know, not only that it can counter blast and revive a unit, but it could also fetch anything from the deck and send it to the drop zone. So this can help out with getting your key pieces or even your ride consistency, especially for grade three. For example, you can send a Night Rose or a Beatrice and actually grab it with a card such as Greed Shade. And Greed Shade can discard a card, mill two, and then grab anything from your drop zone and add it to your hand. So that helps with that synergy as well. Now to the more premium side of things, you can see both Night Rose and Beatrice not being excluded from themselves, but actually included. And so if you see a deck, you're bound to have to see at least one copy of each card in either variant. Once more focus on a more aggressive nature, such as Night Rose, one might be more focused as a control basis, such as Beatrice. One of the best strides for Grand Blue is Bad Bounty. Bad Bounty is one of the strides that you can attack at the end of the battle, Counter Blast one, discard three cards, and then choose a grade three from your drop zone, and then write it as Vanguard, as stand. And then this goes back to the G zone as well. This allows Grand Blue to have multi-attack with the Vanguard too. This is huge against matchups such as Mega Colony and Chaos, where you may have a hard time calling rear guards or using rear guards. This can give you more Vanguard pressure in that sense, so that way it's not an uphill battle. But also it helps promote more attacks with cards such as Night Rose and BHS since they're able to revive units during that ride or during the attack that they attack. Furthermore, you have cards such as Nightstorm and Night Mist. Nightstorm is a card that at the end of the battle, you can counter blast one, call any card from your drop zone and call it to the regard circle. This lets you extend attacks as a regard so you can start poking and actually doing more pressure. Night Mist is a grade three, the old Limit Break 4 era one, where you can actually ride this before you go into your Bad Bounty Strike, so that way when you rewrite a grade three, you're able to do the break ride. The break ride will let you actually revive two units and give them plus 5k until the end of the turn. This will help you extend to more attacks as well with more power on top of that too. So just be advisable at the damage you are because you do have to have limit break 4. The next ride that you have is Obadiah. Obadiah is kind of the last one. Flip something in the G zone. You can look up to 5 cards into your deck and actually send it to the drop zone. Then you can call two cards for every face up card that you have in the G zone. So if you first throw this, you would call two, which is typical to play with Obadiah. But if you went first and you G guard it, you're able to be actually revive four in that total. So that would be ideal. Then you can use cards such as Nice Turn to have more attacks and more pressure. You can use other cards to help build up advantage too. So just be cognizant of that. Due to the nature of Obadiah and other cards such as like Columbard, you're able to actually have tax in your deck. What are tax? These are cards that you're able to use for specific scenarios and matchups. So tax are, that are very common are such as Bell, the Stokea unit. This is used against a Narukami matchup because that way you're able to return some of your buying units back to the drop zone because Narukami will start taking away from your drop zone, which your Grand Blue deck needs. Not only that, but this is in tandem with use Pat to Ghosty too. So if you want to reuse that shield, that's also that in that sense. The second card is also Hanali. This is a Cray Elemental that helps prevent multi-attack with certain clans because that forces them to actually pay a counter blast for the fifth battle or more. Sometimes Grand Blue needs some time to actually go into the win con. So Hanali is such a great card to help you make sure you get to your winning image. There's also options with more Stokea cards. I know Solon Vanguard actually did this with a recent deck profile since he did so well too in making top eight. So I was also link in the description below. So he has a really good in-depth profile that he goes into that as well. Lastly, we do have a disruptive play in this clan. So it is the Negro Lily Cannoneer play. So specifically with Cannoneer, when it's revived, you can counter blast one, retire one of your opponent's units and draw a card. Do keep in mind this is GB1. Now, why is this disruptive? One, because you can do revive your opponent's turn. And how is this possible? Because you have a card such as the G Guardian. Negro Lily. Negro Lily, when it's used, you can counter blast one, retire one of your units, and revive a ghosty normal unit, and it gets plus 10k shield as well. Now, how does this all fit in? You want to revive Beatrice. Beatrice can then activate with Soul Blasting a card and actually reviving the Cannoneer as well, and then that's when Cannoneer can actually activate its effect to retire one of the cards one of your opponent's regards in that sense too. So just be mindful of the play. It does use two counter blasts. You can also use other cards such as like Grenache, Greed Shade, and other cards with the Negro Lily Beatrice play to revive that. So you don't always have to use a defensive Negro Lily, kind of like a pseudo denial Griffin play. Three tips or general guidelines that I want to mention too. First is really focus on setting up your drop zone and feel as needed as early on as possible. So with Grand Blue, there is a slow start in the sense because it does rely on cards being in the drop zone to begin with. So the faster you're able to set up your drop zone with the cards that you need, the better it is for you. Secondly, make sure to prioritize on reviving cards from the drop zone onto your field instead of actually calling cards from hand. 
This helps you actually generate advantage and also keep your resources for shield value in your hand too. So that way you're not only being aggressive and using the resources that you have in the drop zone, but you have a healthy hand to be able to survive your opponent's turn and be able to do your winning image the following turns. Lastly, beware of deck out. It's definitely recommended to get a practice for each of the grand blue decks that I have. They have what I call a stopping point where you may be milling or you're actually excessively drawing it just or soul charging. It just depends on the deck that you're using. So I definitely recommend finding that stopping point for you. And then it may vary from certain matchups. So I definitely recommend play testing. So that way you don't deck out and you could actually lose to being six damage rather than deck out. <laughs> if you want a deck list, I definitely recommend check out the description. I have multiple links for multiple videos. I have links to other content creators such as myself, Solon Vanguard, Outer Orange, create TXE and many other grand blue players and enthusiasts as well. Not only that, you can check out the Rogue of the Seven Seas blog as well. That's specifically for grand blue stoke in general. For, so feel free to read some of those articles. We have interview articles with deck lists as well too as well. And if you do plan to buy any cards for, through TCG player, I would highly appreciate you using the TCG player affiliate link in the description below. So that way you can get your cards, but also help the channel out as well. And if you're interested in more Grand Blue product, we actually have the play mats from Next Level Gaming. That is not only State Kea, but there's a mix of Grand Blue as well, and also the keychain. So as you can see, we have the Night Rose keychain as well. Really good quality as well. So I definitely recommend it too if you want to up your game in Grand Blue. The affiliate link is down below in the description, and it has a 10% discount on your next purchase as well. If this video gave you some value, please leave a like. It actually helps the algorithm to actually spread it out to many card fighters such as yourself too as well to actually have people learn more about Grand Blue. Not only that, but feel free to comment down below on this pinned thread that I have any other suggestions or tips, maybe some other cards that you want to explore more so that way a fellow card fighter like yourself can actually look into it and actually see what other helpful advice is out there too. Not to mention share it with a fellow amigo that is interested in the clan or wants to learn how to face against it and even also some Grand Blue veterans or even just fans as well. Lastly, just make sure to subscribe and hit that bell for instant notifications for future content as well. On to the next time amigos. See ya. Bye.